Hi everyone, continuing from a previous video where I discuss my top three high yield Canadian stocks for 2023. Today, I'll be briefly breaking down my top three high growth US dividend stocks. I keep saying briefly because I found the viewers logging off or tuning out when I, when I did an in-depth financial breakdown or review. The criteria I used to choose the stocks for this video involve at least 10 years of paying dividends and growing their dividends by at least 10% in the last five years. One caveat when investing in US stocks, these are more stable, they're a lot more established than Canadian stocks. Plus the market right now, I'm not sure why, but everything seems to be so expensive. The stocks are so high, the yield seems to be super low, but I'm recommending stable and safe stocks that will pay increasing dividends. Even though it pays 2% now, it'll pay 2.2% next year and then 2.5 and then 2.75. These are long-term hold stocks. Another caveat, I don't own any of these stocks. I actually don't own any stocks except Apple right now. I switched my portfolio to 100% options trading because I can make more money trading options than dividend or just holding growth stocks. Before I get started, if you're a beginner or new to Canadian finance, I've created a course for you called Canadian Finance Pro. It's eight hours long, it's almost 60 videos where I discuss budgeting, credit, inflation, managing debt, where to invest, how to invest for beginners, and once a month, I'll do a live Q&A with anyone interested. First up, Starbucks. This is the only time you'll see me buying Starbucks. They're a sugar company, not really a coffee company, but maybe that's a topic for another video. You know what? If your order is more than two words, you're not drinking coffee. Small, cappuccino, large, Americano. And if the foam has a little design in it, all the better. Back to the video, Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, SBUCKS trading at 107 USD, which is super high at the time of making this video. I'm not sure why stocks have shot up 20% in 2023, but I think it'll come down and there will be some good buying opportunities coming up. The current dividend is $2.12 per share, meaning the yield is 1.97%. This sounds super low, but you're getting a growth stock along with some dividends. The PE ratio is 37, meaning the price to earnings, in theory, if you own 100% of Starbucks, it would take you 37 years to make back your money. That is on the high end. I would like to see stocks more at the 20 PE ratio range, but I don't get to make the rules. This is a buy and hold stock and I'll tell you why. The dividend growth. Starbucks has been increasing and paying their dividends since 2010. They've been growing it every year since they started paying a dividend. They have 12 years, 12 years of dividend growth and the last five years have had a 13.9% growth rate. What's even crazier, look at the 10 year growth rate, 20% growth. You're probably thinking this is not annual growth. That's too high. That's probably from 20% from when they started to now. But take a look at the first dividend in 2010. They were paying five cents per quarter. And now take a look at this dividend. They're paying 53 cents per quarter. The quarterly dividend has gone up 10 times, 10x. That's a thousand percent, right? The dividend is now 212 per share, but at 13.9% growth, it would be 241 next year, meaning it's 1.97% growth annual yield now, could be 2.25% next year. You're here for the long term, and this is good. This is good for long term growth and maybe a dividend, maybe a dividend retirement portfolio. Next on the list is Lowe's. I've been debating between Lowe's and Home Depot, but I didn't want to include both because they're so similar. I chose Lowe's because they've increased 118% over the last five years, whereas Home Depot only increased 65%. Lowe's ticker symbol LOW is currently trading at 212 per share. The dividend is 420 per share, which gives Lowe's a similar yield of 1.96%. Again, the yield seems low, but you're here for the dividend growth. They've been paying and increasing their dividend for 33 years. The growth for the last five years is 16.5%, and the last 10 years have been 19% annually. So you'll be making 420 now, but next year you'll be making 490 and then 570. Over the long term, this will be a great pick for a safe and stable retirement portfolio. Five years averaging 16.5% growth. You're probably wondering if the dividend is safe or stable, but if you look at their payout ratio, it's sitting at 35%, meaning every dollar they earn, they pay out about 35 cents. For a company like Lowe's, I would want to see a max of 50% payout ratio, meaning they still have room to increase the dividends if their earnings are stable. 
I'm more confident in Lowe's current stock price compared to Starbucks because the PE ratio is 20, meaning if you own 100% of the shares, it would take you 20 years to make your investment back. That's much more consistent with the S&P 500 average, and it means the stock is fairly priced and a great addition to a long-term portfolio. Last on the list for today is JP Morgan Chase. I felt a little weird about including in this video just based on the recent news about the CEO's past or the executive past, but if we can put aside the negative news about the staff, the company or the stock is a great investment. JP Morgan Chase, ticker symbol JPM, is currently trading at 142 US dollars. They pay a dividend of $4 per share, meaning it has the dividend, the highest dividend yield in this video of 2.81%, and the dividend is paid quarterly. They've been paying and increasing their dividends for 31 years. The average growth over the last five years is 16.5%. Your current payment would be $4 per share now, but it would be $4.66 next year and then $5.43. In two years, your yield would be 3.8%. You can see how quickly this can grow to be a huge part of your retirement portfolio. They've been increasing for 31 years. Your personal yield could be 30 or 40% if you're able to hold for that long. In, in the dividend game, patience is key and slow and steady wins the race. Looking at the PE ratio to see if it's over or undervalued, it's currently sitting at 11. This seems low, like it's undervalued. You might say, hey, the stock could grow up to a 15 or 20 PE ratio. If you bought every share of JP Morgan, you can make your investment back in 11 years. But note, bank or financial stocks are usually sitting in this range. I've seen Royal Bank or TD Bank in Canada sitting at an eight or nine PE ratio. It's all about looking at a company's peers and everyone else in the industry. You can compare, you can't compare a bank stock to a tech stock. One is stable, steady, and established. The other is looking for cons constant growth and hasn't been around for as long. Lastly, if you're wondering, 16.5% over 31 years, can they sustain the dividend? What if they run out of money? Are they earning enough? You can look at the payout ratio currently sitting at 33%. Every dollar they earn, they pay out 33 cents, which is consistent with other financial companies in the industry. That's it for this video. Just three recommendations. While researching stocks, I had to book three out of a potential 40 stocks. The US has a lot more to choose from. I could probably make another video on US dividend paying ETFs as well. I've been getting a lot of questions about covered call ETFs that are paying 10% yields. I get it, those are appealing, but they don't provide as much capital appreciation. These stocks are more for building a retirement portfolio, building the cash, invest these yields into a drip, the compounding of an increasing dividend or 30, over 30 years would be massive. But let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and tune into the next one.